It's not Muhammad, it's not Buddha, it's not Krishna, it is Christ. All those fake or false prophets point back to Christ. And you know what Christ says in John 14, 6? I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. It's time for you guys to quit this degenerate act, take some accountability, accept Christ, look yourself in the mirror, and from that, my friends, uh, the path will be made clear. All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video on the Christ. Oh, I should say, <laughs> no, on the David Hammond YouTube channel. Yes, guys, we've changed it back to David Hammond as the street preaching channel is now called Christ Developed. That is my street preaching ministry. I'm the founder, David Hammond. That is Christ Developed. Well, that's out of the way. Let's get this video going and begin. So, guys, in today's video, I titled it How to Overcome Lust as Men. Again, guys, I know I've made this video. I'm so sorry, maybe like 30 times, but the reality is, guys is that number one I'm gonna keep repeating videos because number two most importantly uh, you guys are still struggling with this you know I'd like to say guys I can make a video one time and it's done but the reality is I receive maybe like <sighs> Just on lust alone, maybe like five, six DMs every single day, whether that's through questions, that's through, again, DMs on Instagram, YouTube comments, maybe more, 10, 20, I don't know, guys. And it's, it really revolves around the same few questions, so I'm really trying to bang that out for you guys so this can become very clear, um, notable in your head, and we're able to move forward. So with that, guys, to jump straight into the video, overcoming lust as men or as Christians. Now, in other videos, I would tell you that, yes, we need to become born again. That's very obvious, and I'm actually not gonna say that in this video. Well, I mean, that's implied, guys. If you don't know what being born again is, I've made a video. You can check it out, guys. If we are not born again, um, you really cannot overcome anything of the flesh. I don't care what that is. That could be fornication. That could be lust. That could be drinking. That could be wrath. I mean, guys, sins are, there are millions of sins, okay? There are thousands of sins, and all of us are damned. We're all damned to hell, okay? There's no question about it. All of us have fallen short, and without the blood of Christ or being born again, again, it's not about your religion. It's not about Catholicism, how many Hail Marys you do, or how many times you pray. That is nothing. That literally means nothing, guys. It's are you born again? Once you were born again, you were now cloaked in the Lamb's blood. Right? Do you understand that Jesus is the sacrificial lamb? In the Old Testament, they would literally kill lambs to atone for sins. Well, Jesus is the lamb for all of humankind, okay? Past, present, future. Now, with that said, I'm assuming you guys are born again. The vast majority of you are not. I get a lot of client calls, and a lot of you guys come to me, and you're confused. You're like, what does that mean? And I understand it's kind of a foreign concept. Again, it's 1 Corinthians 2.14. The natural man will not understand the things of the spirit, right? Being born again. It's foolishness to him because he is not spiritually discerned. But once you become spiritually discerned, then all of these things make sense to you. So that is number one. You're born again. How do you become born again? Humble yourself. Have an open, repentant heart. God is looking at your heart. He is not a respecter of man. He doesn't care how much money you have, what you have done, what you haven't done. He's looking at your heart. And if you are vulnerable and you were open, he will give you his Holy Spirit. If you honestly and earnestly seek Christ, he will be found. I'll put up the verse right there. Okay, that's number one. You guys know my testimony. I'm going to stop saying this because I've said this so many times, okay? That's how I became born again, right? Girlfriend left me. We're on the same page. I was humble, vulnerable, prayed to God. Hey, guide me. Bada boom, boom, born again. Number two, what I'm going to hit in this video, guys, and really uh, what I'm going to drive forward. You as men, we as men, <laughs> we need to learn what is required from us from God. Right? We need to understand very diligently what is required from us being biblical men. In Matthew, I believe it is, I want to say 528, Jesus says, if you even look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Now you see guys, if I didn't know this, if I didn't know how bold Jesus was, if I didn't know the commandments, what's required of me, what, you know, is a sin in the eyes of God. And I just thought, you know, Jesus is just this like fairy tale hippie guy who just walks on tulips. He loves everybody. He, you know, everyone's going to heaven because we're all good people. If I wasn't fully aware of the commandments, of the rules, kind of envision it like you're going to a new job and you need to be aware of the contract. You need to be under, you need to understand, okay, I'm going to work this amount of hours, this is the pay, this is the benefit, this is what happens when this happens. If I'm not fully aware of this, well then if I just show up to the job thinking, you know, doodly who, whatever, and it smacks me in the back of the head, well, it's going to sting a lot. But if I can begin to understand what is required of me, right, oh, this is actually... This is not just something you're telling me to do. I'm actually required to do, right? Work 40 hours a week, hit this percent of standards. I'm thinking of labor for myself. Do A, B, C, D, right? 
right? <laughs> or you're fired. Well, it's the same thing with the Bible. This is what you guys need to understand. And again, I need to make it very clear. I am not promoting a works-based salvation. I am not saying you have to do this thing or don't do this thing and I'm as if I'm the judge. Absolutely not. Again, I want to make it clear. All of us have fallen short. It doesn't matter what good or bad you've done, we're all sinners in the eyes of God. And the wages of sin is death. And through accepting Christ, becoming born again, you will naturally, right? This is in Ezekiel 36, 26. When God removes your, your heart of stone, he gives you a heart of flesh. He gives you his spirit. That spirit will uh, really keep you in God's commandments, right? We have, to, we have to make sure we're abiding in Christ as he abides in us, right? Producing fruits of Christ. For if we're not in Christ, we cannot produce fruits. Uh, so once we're in Christ, naturally, we will begin to follow the rules, right? It's kind of where I'm going, but you can only follow these rules even if you were in Christ by first knowing them, right? Now, if you're born again, the spirit will guide you to these truths. You'll naturally begin to overcome lust. You'll naturally, so here's kind of the answer, right? This is why I didn't want to talk about it. You're naturally going to begin to overcome fornication or, or, or wrath or these things, or maybe you drank a lot or you were into homosexuality, right? Whatever it is, everyone's got their things. Uh, we were given over to vile affections, right? When you come to Christ openly and honestly and earnestly and you were born again, you will naturally, his spirit will cleanse that. It, it, he will remove it from you, right? But... You still need to understand what's required of him. Like, you still need to understand what, what he wants from us, right? The way I view it, guys, and this is really what helps me. I was speaking to a client this morning about this, is imagine you have a father, right? Because this is essentially what it is. You have a father, and you really love and respect this father. This father died for you. For there is no greater love than this, than a man laid down his life for his fellow comrade, right? His fellow brothers. Um, your father died for you. And it's like he told you on his deathbed, what he was requiring from you. You now knowing that, and you love and respect this man so much, and he died for you, right? My literal dad died, so this really hits, hits, hits home very close to me. If I know what he told me to do, like as he was dying, he looked at me and said, don't do these things. And I went out and willfully kept doing them. Do you know the amount of guilt I would feel, the amount of shame? And that's really what following Christ is. It's not a matter, this is what I said, guys, it's not a workspace salvation. It's not like, you know, if you're born again and you slip up, you fornicate once, that's it, buddy, you're going to hell. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying at all. But you naturally have this conviction within you that you naturally want to please God. You don't want to displease him. When you're born again and you, you love and you respect what this leader has done for you, you naturally just want to stay in his statutes and commands. You naturally want to please him, right? And that's really what the Holy Spirit is. You naturally want to please him, but we can only naturally want to please someone if we first know what those commandments were. If my dad, let's say he died, he didn't tell me anything. He didn't give me any advice. There was no Bible. There was no word. I didn't know what Jesus was requiring of me as a man. Well, then I'm not, I'm not going to feel the same conviction. And if I do feel the conviction, it'll be loose. I'll, be, I'll still be confused. I won't be, sure, I won't be sure where to guide it. But because I understand... And really, guys, apply this with everything in life. You know, what is required of me being a biblical man? How I'm supposed to carry myself? How I'm commanded in, in, uh, in Mark 16, 15 by Jesus to go out and to spread the gospel. See, Jesus is my ultimate authority. Not man, not a teacher, not this guy, but him, but Christ. He commands me to go out and to spread the gospel to all creation. Okay, well, it's very clear as day. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to go do it. You know what he says? He says, go onto the rooftops, the highways and the byways. Preach to everybody. You know what else he says? That if a man does not provide for his family, he is worse than an unbeliever. I didn't know these things. I didn't know that I was, like, like of course, I knew I was supposed to provide for my family, but I didn't know it was that serious. So now I'm working 10 times harder to make sure that when God does send me my wife, she's not going to be out working in corporate slave America, and I'm going to be providing. Do you understand? I know that God wants me to be celibate till marriage. He doesn't want me fornicating. Okay, well, that's, that's a clear commandment. It gives me guidelines. And now for some of you guys, you may be thinking, oh, well, that sucks. You know, that's not fair. That's not fun. I have to do all these things. And in fact, what I would tell you is no. Actually, that's the most liberating thing you can do because now you have real guideline. You know where to, to, to move yourself as a man. You see, the worst thing that a man can do in particular, and this is really what feminism is trying to accomplish, is it's trying to remove any biblical a guideline or authority. And I mean, really, if you think about it, it has. Feminism and really any degenerate satanic agenda, it's one fear is Jesus Christ. It's not Muhammad. It's not Buddha. It's not Islam. It's not atheism. It's, it, it, it's Christ. Every degenerate satanic plot is anti-Christ. 
Feminism is anti-Christ. It's anti-marriage. It's anti-Jesus. It's anti-two uh, genders. It's anti-stay-at-home <laughs> mother or, or mom, right? right? Raise children, right? And believe me, guys, take it from me. I've preached to many feminists. I've seen how they react. <laughs> right? So that's really it, guys, at the end of the day. My solution for you guys to overcome lust, as well as a ton of things, is to just be more in the Word. Do you actually understand what's required and commanded of you as a Christian? As a follower of Christ, do you know how you're supposed to act? Because I'll tell you what, man, if we had more men who were very clear, and again, I want to make this clear. I'm still learning this, guys. I'm, I'm not saying I'm some genius expert. Absolutely not. I'm in this with you guys. The Holy Spirit is leading me to these truths. But, you know, if we had more men who were very firm and rooted, built their house upon the rock and not the sand, and they understood what was commanded from them from Christ, do you think they would allow all this degeneracy to happen? Do you think they would allow their wives to walk over them like this? Do you think they would allow feminism to happen? Do you think they'd allow 72 genders to run prevalent? No. Absolutely not. The reason I have authority to go into the streets, the highways and the byways, and to preach with confidence and conviction is because it has been guidelined and laid out for me. If it was not laid out, I would have no clue what to do. And this is the problem with atheism or a lot of New Agers or a lot of secularists. You guys think you want freedom. No, you don't. Really, that's your sinful, degenerate nature. It, it, that is what wants freedom. And it's not real freedom because the wages of sin is death. You guys just want no responsibility. That's what you want. That's what children want. You guys want to eat candy all day long, get your little stimulus check from the government, you know, just run around in your diaper and then complain that the Christian man's the evil one who's actually building the West with his two hands. Right? <laughs> Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. That's what's happened in our society. The hardest working Christian men, right? Women too, but women don't work in the same way. But, but, but they're very important. They're just as important. But working men who are, who are conserving the West and building it with everything they have are the ones that are getting persecuted and demonized the most. Meanwhile, the ones who do absolutely nothing, they, again, like I said, sit, sit at home. They're all victims, fat, overweight. They're ruining society. Um, get glorified the most. Be as fat as you want. Fat acceptance month, LGBTQ month, uh, you know, victim month. Anything that's a victim, society's going to propagate. And anything that is built on structure, hierarchy, uh, built beauty in our world objectively is going to be demonized, right? This is what Satan does, guys. He finds anything that is good, and he's going to call it evil, right? So if you guys can't see this and can't realize that through this, you know, through understanding the evil, there is good, and that good is Christ, if you can't understand that, then you're just, you're just retarded at this point. Excuse my language, but like, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Like, you're choosing to stay ignorant. You see what it says in 1 Corinthians 1.18 is that the message of the gospel, the message of the cross, is foolishness to those that are perishing, but to those who are saved, it is the power of God. You see, the Bible, the word, testifies against our sin. In John 3.19, it states that light has come into the world, Jesus, the message, the gospel, the good news, but men have chosen darkness because their deeds were evil. Right? This is not a shock. The gospel holds a mirror up to you to show you how ugly and sinful you and I are as people, how wretched we are, how we cannot save ourselves, despite what your favorite YouTubers and red pill creators or Hamza or whatever these guys say. You're not good enough, buddy. Your works mean nothing. No amount of cold showers you take, no amount of being traditional is gonna, is gonna cut it. Imagine going to God and saying, God, you know, I know I committed all these sins, but like I was traditional, you know? I took cold showers. <laughs> right? He's going to laugh at you. Depart from me. I never knew you. It is not through trying to be Christ yourself, but through accepting the blood of the one who already accomplished it. And from that, my friend, having his blood sanctify you, becoming more like Christ, but that can only happen if you humble yourself, drop your pride, and accept the man who's already accomplished it. It's not Muhammad, it's not Buddha, it's not Krishna, it is Christ. All those fake or false prophets point back to Christ. And you know what Christ says in John 14, 6? I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. It's time for you guys to quit this degenerate act, take some accountability, accept Christ, look yourself in the mirror, and from that, my friends, uh, the path will be made clear. I'm a wretched sinner like all of you guys. I am no better. I'm, I'm a random dude off the street who was, by the grace of God, saved by Jesus Christ. 
and uh, I, I don't deserve this grace. That's what grace means. It's unmerited favor. You don't deserve it, but you're given it like a free gift, and it's our obligation to go and to spread this free gift with all of you guys. So that's how you overcome lust, as well as understanding how to be a biblical man in this tyrannical world that is only going to get worse, and the blood will, will be on your hands if you don't speak up. Make that very clear. You are judged based on how much you know. And if you watch this channel and you're not going out and spreading the word, you will be judged harder than the man who's never heard the gospel. Much harder. The blood's on your hands, but you can make this happen. I promise you. That's why I built this channel, okay? So God bless, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you all enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And I'll finish the video here, guys, with the one final plug. If you guys are interested and want to learn more on how to be more like Christ, a biblically-based man, masculine, protecting your family, your country, growing and improving every area of your life, guys, there is one-on-one -on -one coaching. Spots are open below. I would love to speak with you guys. I absolutely love it, and you men make such progress. It is fantastic. Thank you, guys. Have an amazing day. I love you all, and I will see you next video. Amen. All glory to God. I am absolutely nothing. I'm a wretched, sinful man man. The only thing good in me is Christ, and uh, we're just here to exalt his name. Amen. God bless. See you guys next video. That's how you overcome lust, and I'll see you then. All right. Till then, much love. Peace.